Hello crafters, this is Brett Lund from Robert's Crafts for another Technique Thursday. Today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on embossing powder. See that? This was actually cut out using the Cricut and then I inked it and embossed it. So it kind of gives you a, a shimmering glimmer look. Embossing powder is one of my favorite tools to use. Um, there, that's better. Embossing powder, uh, the thing that I like about embossing powder is it comes in so many different colors. We have Hampton Art, which if you look at this one, this one has, um, it has your solids right here, and then it looks like they gave you another solid, but if you look really close, there's actually kind of a shimmer to this side. And this is, so this is the Hampton Art Embossing Powder Value Pack, and then we also have another Hampton Art, which is this one. And this one has, if you look right here, it has all of the earth tones. And then on this side, it has things such as uh, polished silver, more like a, a tarnished silver, a gold, a sparkly gold. This one's almost like a rust color, and this one's almost like a bronze color. Not to mention it comes with your black and white. So that's also another new uh, product that Robert's Crafts carries. Um, Robert's Crafts also has started carrying um, embossing powder from American Crafts. This actually happens to be my most favorite uh, embossing powder around. And this is actually what I'm going to be using on today's projects. The reason why I like the American Crafts embossing powder more than anybody else is partially because it comes in a bazillion different colors. These are just a few colors. I, I'm using these for a project for uh, Valentine's Day. And um, the great thing is, is you look at this bottle and say, oh, I have a lot of embossing that I need to do. I'm gonna need to buy two or three bottles. Well, to be honest, this is the case of a little goes a long, long, long way. And then, if you know, um, let me back up. First of all, um, when buying embossing powder, you want to make a decision whether or not you want a basic opaque finish or a glitter finish um, or, and I don't have one with me, or you can get a clear finish. Now the opaque finish is going to give you a, uh, it's basically going to give you that color. And uh, another thing that I really, really like about the American Crafts embossing powder is is it is very very true to the color that's on the bottle so many times I have bought embossing powders and um, the embossing powder ends up to be a shade darker or a shade lighter than what's on the bottle not with American Crafts I love 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 American Crafts as you can tell um, another thing that I like with it is that they come with so many glitter powders okay so there's glitter that um, if you look it actually has kind of a glittery look um, and that's going to emboss also. Or you can do, and again I don't have it, clear. Now the reason why you would do clear is, is because a lot of times you want the image itself to kind of pop um, on the page and clear is not going to um, cover the image. It's not going to cover the paper. So it actually gives it a really, really fun, fun um, look and feel. Um, that's what I like about the American Crafts. Now, we're talking, what about ink? Now, ink, Robert's Crafts carries um, your basic embossing powder, excuse me, the embossing stamp pad, the top boss, and the thing I like about this is, is this is actually tinted. Now, it's gonna go on pink, so it lets you see where it is. Um, so you want to make sure that if you use the tinted embossing powder um, that you're not going to do a clear because what will happen is, is the, pink, um, the pink ink will actually show through the embossing powder if it's a clear image. If you want to do something clear, you'd want to use maybe like a, embossing, a top boss clear uh, pad or you could also even use a watermark pad from Versamark. 
Another great thing is, is you can actually even use uh, the Tim Holtz Distress Inks. The concept behind embossing inks that you have to understand is, is what you want is, is you want a really, really wet ink that's going to hold the glare. And you'll see when I do my projects the importance of a wet ink because you're going to stamp all over and then you're going to sprinkle and then you're going to shake off and then you're going to heat the embossing powder. And what actually you're doing is, is you're melting the embossing powder. Now, if it was a normal ink pad, most ink pads are stamped and then they're almost instantly dry. That's not going to hold the embossing powder. So you want something nice and wet. So these work well, stays on works well. Um, there's uh, glue pads, um, stays on puts out an excellent glue pad. So does Hampton Arts, and those two glue pads work really, really good. So uh, there's that. Now stamps. The stamps I'm going to be using today are from the Hero Arts Clean Set, and this is the cupcake. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this in probably black. And then what I want to do is, is if I want to go back, I can color the image, I can use um, watercolor paint, watercolor pencils, markers, um, I could even paper piece the image if I wanted to. Or, if I wanted to, I could do this, stamp it on white, and then stamp it with um, kind of like a shimmery clear, and that will kind of give the whole image a shimmer. So, once again, the options are pretty open for doing embossing. Now, one other tool that you need, and that is called an embossing gun. Okay, now, some people say, well, what's the point of an embossing gun? I have a hair dryer. Okay, the differences between an embossing gun and a hair dryer is a hair dryer blows a ton of air and it doesn't get very hot. A heat gun or an embossing gun will end up blowing super, super hot, hot air. In fact, it's so hot that in fact they put a label, caution, hot surface, avoid contact. This little label, this little thing inside here, I don't know if you can see it, this will actually get super hot. So you want to make sure that you don't touch it, hence the stand. Or if you're doing a lot, you can hold it like this, the switch is up here, you flip it on, and then you flip it off. So that's basically the embossing gun. Not to mention it comes in a great color. Uh, I know a lot of people like uh, their tools that are pink. This, um, this gun is made by American Crafts. Um, and once again, this one is actually my favorite one. Now, I'm going to show you two techniques today. The first technique is, this is, um, this is a, uh, just a normal card, and what I'm going to do is, on this, I'm going to stamp it in black. I mean, I'm going to emboss it in black. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up my stamp, make sure that it's nice and wet. Okay, and we're going to go right in the center. Okay, now you can't see it, you probably can't see it on the camera, but there's a faint pink image. Now, this is a, um, a technique that I learned from someone, I don't remember who it was, but I think this is a great idea. What they do is, is they have bought um, Ziploc containers, and then they store, they store the most used embossing powder in here. I think there's like two jars, maybe three jars of embossing powder. And then I put what it is on top, and then I store a spoon inside, and I'll show you the reason why. And I'll actually show you, let's say you only have a little bottle, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. So notice the ink is still wet. See, that's the point of um, a wet ink pad, okay? So I put the ink powder, I put that on there, and then I kind of flick it off, and if you notice, the image is still there. It looks really grainy, and so what you want to do is don't touch it, we're going to set this off to the side, and then with this, with the gun, we're going to go ahead and emboss it. And what's going to happen is, is I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but the embossing powder will actually melt, and you'll be able to see it melt. So here we go. Now it's going to take a little bit just to start it off because this is a cold gun, but if you're embossing a lot of things, it will actually go fairly fast. So with embossing, you want to make sure that you go in maybe a circular direction or whatever there is, because what can happen is, is you can actually scorch the embossing powder. Okay, and so all I'm doing, and see it, if you look, it's starting to change. 
it's actually starting to melt. It actually gets a little bit darker. And so the image is, make sure that center part is done. Okay, and there we go. And it is embossed. Okay, now I let it dry. I let it cool down actually. And then, let's see if it's cooled down. Yeah, and then we can, and then it's kind of a raised image. That is embossing powder. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, another technique that I thoroughly love to do, and it's this technique that I did with the Love Notes book. And if you look throughout the whole book, I have done um, all of the words and then I've embossed the words. This is how I do it. You take whatever this is, in this, in this case, I'm using a doily. <coughs> and I'm going to liberally ink this up. Okay, so we're going to get this doily super wet. Okay, because what's going to happen is I am going to sprinkle the embossing powder on top of this. Now this is where your um, tweezers come into play. I have burned my fingers many a times. So you want to make sure that when doing this project, you have a good set of tweezers. Making Memories comes has a really, really good set of tweezers that I thoroughly like. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to pretend that um, I, uh, I am reaching for the... We're going to pretend that um, I just have... We're going to do... Um, Let's say I want to do red, okay? So what I do is, is this is a really cool tray, and you know what, to be honest, um, you don't need it, but I like it, and if, if you don't have a tray, a good piece of paper works just fine. So then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the embossing powder, and we're gonna sprinkle it all over. Basically what we're doing is we're covering it completely. So we cover it and don't worry, the stuff that we don't use we'll put back in. Then you take that and see if you look it's kind of grainy. Now this is where I want to use my tweezers because this is going to get super hot. Now I want to move this off because what will happen is, is if I try to heat this, what's going to happen is, is it will melt the whole embossing powder. Okay, So now we'll start heating it and this, you'll be able to notice the embossing powder will start to melt. Okay, there we go. You can start to see it kind of, it goes really glossy. Okay, there we go. So that is now our embossed doily. It's pretty cool. It has an embossed image, even though it's white. Now, let's say you wanted, for some reason, you wanted to do a navy blue doily. You can do it two ways. You can either get navy blue embossing powder, or you can get Distress Ink, stamp it with navy blue, and then sprinkle it with clear embossing powder. Gives you the same look. So anyways, that is embossing powder for you. Uh, embossing powder is so much fun, and I hope that you will uh, have the opportunity to go to the Roberts uh, ink section, check out all the different colors of embossing ink, especially my favorites, American Crafts, and, uh, and also don't forget to pick up yourself a heat gun. And, uh, then just have fun with embossing powder. Uh, also, the if you don't understand it very well, the uh, the uh, <laughs> the the associates—that's the word—the associates are more than willing to help you figure out embossing powder. So until then, happy crafting.